Hello everyone and welcome back to another great super cool radio interview. I'm your host as always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. And before I start talking about my guests, just a quick reminder to thumbs up this video and make sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you do not miss any new interviews or episodes. I got a really great guest who will be joining me momentarily. He is Drew Elliott from Seven Stones. On April 21st, Seven Stones released their latest album entitled Hurt Turns Into Hate. And on May 20th, they'll be touring with Texas Hippie Coalition. In this interview, we talk about the brand new album, Hurt Turns Into Hate, touring with Texas Hippie Coalition, talking about Scott Stapp and Creed, and so much more. I hope you enjoy this interview, so let's dive in. Before we jump into the show, I want to tell you about our merch store on Threadless. Shop a wide variety of logos with multiple colors and sizes available for each design. Your support is greatly appreciated and helps us continue to make killer content like this episode. Please visit supercoolradio.threadless.com or the link in the description to shop now. I got a really great guest joining me. At this time, on April 21st, they released their brand new album entitled Hurt Turns Into Hate. And on May 20th, they're going to tour with Texas Hippie Coalition. Please welcome from Seven Stones, Drew Elliott. What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me on, man. Of course. Okay. Very nice to have you on. I know, uh, as, I, as I just said, you guys got a lot of cool stuff in the works, including an upcoming tour. So I'm very happy to have you on the show. Thanks, man. I'm glad to be here. Um, it's been a whirlwind these past, uh, well, about two months. So uh, we're looking forward to all of it, man. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know we got so much to discuss. Before we jump into the new album and the upcoming tour, I did want to ask you. Uh, so starting off, this is probably the most challenging question I'll ask you, and then we can dive into some more fun stuff. So for you, what has been the uh, the best concert you've attended and the best concert you have performed at. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm going to try to watch, watch my language, but it's probably not going to go too well. Oh, um, you're fine, man. <laughs> the best concert I've ever been to. Holy shit. That's a, that's a big one. Um, I think just for personal experience, like the one that jumps out at me right now, um, I saw uh, – shit, who was the second band that played? Um, I saw Plush and Seether. Oh, it was Nonpoint. Plush and Nonpoint and uh, Seether was the headliner. Saw them in Atlanta, and I actually got to hang out with Seether afterwards. So I, got, I think that like really kind of pushes like where that was one of my favorites. And uh, I was asked this recently about like our favorite show the, that I've played so far, and uh, Blue Ridge was awesome. Um, very much enjoyed that. Uh, it was just the the mass scale of that festival is insane and um okay there's a cat meowing in the background um <laughs> she sounds like she's dying which is not helping anything she's fine the cat is fine um uh, shit <laughs> lost my train of thought here um <laughs> that's, that's all I think a historical venue that we've been to that like it wasn't like packed out or anything but at harpo's in detroit was really cool um just the history through that whole that building in Detroit itself, it was that one was really cool being there because that stage is massive. It's like 25 foot off the ground. It is huge. And there's a big sign on the side of it says no stage diving, which we usually like, man, that's stupid. No, this one was like, for sure. Like, don't do that ever. I also scared the shit out of me, like getting close to the edge of the stage. I was like, you know what? I'm going to stay back here this time. Like, I'm not going to go anywhere near the stage. <laughs> not that close to the edge. No, yeah, I got you for sure. I've heard a lot of great things about uh, Harpo's. I, I, I'm from Indiana, so you know, not that you know, terribly far away. But I've, I've heard a lot. It's a very legendary venue. Um, they always have some really great shows. I didn't know about the stage. I've never actually been there, but that's uh, that's pretty high up there, dude. I, like, I don't know the exact specifications, but it is very tall. And the owner uh, Roosevelt, he's really cool. He's a really cool guy. 
um, we had a blast just being able to sit down and talk to him for a few minutes and then seeing his, uh, like his office, all the memorabilia that he's had over the years is insane. Such a cool place, man. Oh yeah, for sure. I definitely, I definitely want to get up there at some point and uh, go to that venue because again, heard a lot of great things and uh, yeah, very historic uh, venue for sure. So for for you now, so focus on you. So before Seven Stones, um, how did you get uh, started as a musician? I um, I, I th my parents got me a guitar when I was in high school. It was a Gibson Talent meshup. So it had like almost a less body kind of like a less Paul body and uh, sounded actually, I still have it. Like the tone on it's really great, but I really didn't do much with it. I like, I guess I was a little lazy uh, at the same time. Um, I just, I started more, I guess when I was in college, I um, had an acoustic and then I started writing lyrics about how I felt, which is, uh, I mean, what it's supposed to be about, you know, and uh, just going through, you know, the coming of age type stuff in your early 20s and, you know, leaving 18, you know, heartbreak and all that fun jazz. I started just picking out. I was like, hey, I could sing at the same time, too. That's kind of crazy. You know, that's got to be fun. And I had no intentions of starting a band. Uh, I, I was going to like, maybe I can write some music and just be like uh, and sell it. I like, that'd be freaking cool. You know, let's make some money. Give me some royalties. Like, <laughs> It's not as easy as it sounds, uh, I've learned. So, yeah, that's where it started. And then um, our original guitar player I was friends with in high school. Uh, I didn't talk to him for like seven years. And all of a sudden we hit it back off and I showed him some stuff that I wrote and uh, found another buddy from high school that still played drums. And uh, it kind of started from there, which both of them are not in the band anymore. But uh, it continued <laughs> after them, of course. <laughs> No, no, I got you for sure, for sure. So when did you um, kind of transition and started taking, like, this is what I kind of want to do more, like, seriously? Like, when did you think, like, hey, I, I want to start a band and, you know, uh, write and record music? I think um, after, because we, we put a lot of money into that first EP that we, we had. Um, it just didn't sound the way we wanted it to. So I, I guess I knew then. I was like, you know what? I'm... I didn't have a lot of confidence at the beginning either because, you know, your parents tell you like the American Idol auditions are like, I, I sound great in the shower. Mom says that she loves it. I was like worried about that, like fully, like having that much stage fright. And uh, we, we played a couple of shows. And after we got that recorded, I was like, you know what? Like, I, I want to do this, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm down to, you know, attempt this, you know, for a while because it, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, I mean. It's not the 70s where you sign a $3 million contract or the 80s and you get to have all that fun jazz. I mean, I'm sure it still happens today, but it's nowhere near the same. So, I mean, you know, it took some time and made some sacrifices of like, I lived with my parents for so long, <laughs> like just like trying to keep it going. And I mean, uh, I don't live with them now, but uh, yeah, still trying it. <laughs> no, I got you. There's definitely... For especially like music or art, really in general, you know, there, there's the sacrifice you do have to make to, you know, because it is a grind, you know. As yeah. you said, some people get lucky, you get, you know, here's a bunch of money in a record deal, but yeah. unfortunately, that's very few and far between. Very much so. We were hoping. I mean, we're still kind of like hoping. I mean, shit. I, I know it's not like we've been doing this for seven years now. So it's still, you know, we still have a lot of grindage to partake in, which we're all here for it, man. It's the, the ride's been a blast. I wouldn't take any of our experiences away, like the bad and the good. Uh, it's You learn from every bit of it, man. Every bit of it. You also learn that the business is crazy as hell. And how some artists that you might enjoy aren't as cool as you thought they were going to be. <laughs> I yeah I know I've um, heard some stories about that and you know a few experiences myself with that but I mean yeah, it, is, it is a very crazy industry I think uh, honestly again anything really in that whole just art and music uh, you know there's a lot a lot of crazy stuff that does go on but I mean definitely a learning experience no matter no matter where you are in the music industry you know beginning or you know making your journey it's always a learning experience oh yeah I mean you're not failing if you're learning from something about it. Uh, is the way I look at it, which, I mean, a lot of people should look at it. And I was not referring to C either, by the way. Those guys are all cool. 
legitimate rock stars and the nicest people on the planet, man. They're they're really cool. I was not referring to them at all. <laughs> no, good disclaimer. I've I've uh, I've talked to a few other people who've met C. They they say the same thing. Super nice yeah. dudes. Uh, really cool to hang out with. So no, I I know you, I know uh, for me personally, and I, I know for our audience now that um you know I know you were not referring to them. Good. I'm, I'm glad. I, I just had to clear that up. I started thinking about it. I was like, ah, it wasn't them. It wasn't them. <laughs> No, I gotcha. I gotcha. So the uh, the current lineup uh, for Seven Stones currently right now, uh, how did when did that come into place? Oh wow, um, the current lineup now, which it might be different on your sheet if you have uh, heard anything. Like even some of the articles that have been written about the the album, the people that were in the band that recorded it, uh, one of them's left. And then we we picked up a guitar player before we went on that last tour, which we did a music video, which it's still not released yet, and promo pictures. And he quit right after tour. The other guy kind of just like bounced, like which I'm not mad at any, either one of them. The timing's always weird, uh, but um, the lineup now uh, is me and Rich are the original members. Um, we picked up Isaiah, our guitar player now. Um, after our original guitar player quit like two weeks before we, we opened up for Blackstone Cherry. And that was nerve wracking as hell, by the way. Um, which <laughs> coincidentally, like a week after that, we went on tour with Ingve too. So that, there, there was a lot of stress that was involved with our original guitar player leaving. It was like, dude, why? Like, why now? Like you could have waited, you know, but he didn't. Um, but then we picked up, sorry, the other guy that left was our drummer. He did half of this tour with us. And then when we got back, uh, we picked up the Texas hippie stuff and he was like, Hey man, I don't, I don't know if, um, you know, if I'm going to do this, so you can give it to Kenny. So Kenny Kerr is our drummer now. And it's, we're back to a four piece. We're back to a four piece where our roots are, I guess. And I'm back to playing rhythm guitar instead of being a fat guy running around yelling at people every now and then on stage. I still do that, but I have a guitar in my hand now. <laughs> All right, so for you, so yes, that that it is different on my sheet uh, uh, compared to what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, but so for you, so since you guys are now going to be touring as a four piece, has there been any kind of like learning curve or adjustment uh, to now tour as a four piece? Uh, not exactly. Uh, Kenny has been a really good friend of ours for a while now, um, and he he's also a drummer for a band in Chat, uh, another band in Chat, uh, called To This Day. We're friends with all those dudes, so it's really cool that we're they're letting us steal Kenny for a little while. Hopefully for a long time, but that's just my, my shit. Um, damn, I just lost my train of thought too. Where I was going with it? Uh, I was I was talking, oh, talking about transition to a four piece. The only transition is of going through. I think Kenny's our fifth drummer now, so it's uh, the songs are like he plays them like the guy that recorded most of the stuff, Jacob, which he was, they're really good friends too, but Jacob had personal reasons for leaving as well. And uh, so it hadn't been too bad with Kenny. Um, we have, we have some sets where we play like three hours. So that's a different thing altogether. That's going to be weird either way. God, keep burping either way you look at it, but not with the lineup. I don't think it's going to change anything. We all mesh really well. We get along really well. Nobody's going to yell at each other on the bus unless it's me. Cause I'm a jackass most of the time. Well, <laughs> As Isaiah likes to call it, the lead singer syndrome. Well, well, I know that's a known term, but I feel like I don't have it. But I guess most assholes say that. Too, so I could be wrong. Uh. Well, I'm glad everything's going very well for you guys. You got a uh, you know solid lineup to be touring with Texas Hippie Coalition, and uh, so I'm glad you know new information for even me because I was not aware of yeah. that. So. I didn't. I didn't want to be like an asshole when you're like, well, what about this guy? I'm like, I, he's not here anymore. But I figured that was a good disclaimer to be like, look, man, shit changed in the past two weeks, <laughs> like really quick. So it is what it is. No, I actually thank you. you know, thank you for clearing that up as well. But I, I did want to talk about uh, the new album that is uh, "Hate Turns uh, Hurt, Hurt Turns Into Hate" that was released on April twenty first through Pavement. Uh, so I know you're talking about, you know, there's some members who recorded on there who are not uh, obviously with the band anymore, but how was the writing and recording the new album? Uh, writing it. Um, so a lot of the songs that we've had for a long time, uh, it just happened. We didn't have anything to solidify and put it on because of the lineup changes that kept happening. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, when Isaiah joined, we kicked out songs like uh, with, there's a, two songs that we haven't even recorded yet that could have been on there. They just weren't completely ready because we were just really busy with uh, like the Ingve stuff. And then we did a tour of like a month ago. So it was really hard to try to like keep anything or record more after that. But the there's three songs on there that he was uh, a vital part in writing uh, the guitar for. Um, so it and it changed our sound a little bit because different styles of playing. And he does the, our old stuff very well, but he added a little bit more of a a groove to some of the stuff that we've kind of I think found a little bit more of our sound uh, as of now because it's going to change constantly, which is good in my opinion. So uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Recording process was um, easy with these guys. We knew what we wanted. And uh, thankfully, the guys that wrote most of it, you know, are still in the band instead of <laughs> the ones that are bouncing. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, no, I got you. I'm glad you know, it um, went really well for you guys. I, I've, I've had the opportunity. I've listened to the album. And, you know, when I, I get a lot of music each day, you know, being a you know, podcaster, you know, especially music podcast, I get so much. And um, you guys really stuck out to me. I really like the guitar riffs on the album, you know, and um, all the songs they have, like, you know, they're again in that rock category, but they all have their kind of only uh, kind of different emotions that they're expressing uh, oh, yeah. for each song. Which is good. That's what I want to write music that expresses emotion where some people can connect. I think the only song on the album that a lot of people wouldn't connect to would be Killing Season. And that's. Another explanation is because that song was brought to us from uh, a haunted house. They were like, hey, yeah, I know this sounds crazy as hell, but Kenny, uh, our drummer now, um, he's actually, he lives in, uh, I'm going to say Scottsboro, Alabama, but that's where Jacob lived, our former drummer. But um, their friends had a haunted house called Corpsewood Hollow. And they were friends with them, uh, with Jacob at the time. And he told me, he was like, hey, man, they want a, like, a haunted house song. I'm like, okay. I was like, I could do it. I was like, what's the name of it? He said, Corpsewood Hollow. I was like, oh, yep. I've already got you going. I'm like, I've already, I'm already writing it in my head. We know what's going on. And, you know, we got a rip to it and everything else. But it doesn't really relate. And <laughs> we've played it live a few times. And people are like, where the fuck is this? Like, what, what, what was that? <laughs> and they explain, I was like, look, we wrote this for a haunted house. Like, we know it's like... <laughs> it's February and we're like, we're not talking about Halloween or like haunted shit anymore, but let's so talk about killing and mercy and all that fun. Yeah. I needed to get that out, but everything else, I, that's where it conveys that emotion. It's like, there's no hate there. It's just talking about fucked up things in that song. It is. <laughs> yeah. Listening to that song and now hearing the kind of backstory behind it makes a lot more sense now. Um, not, off real, I, not off real personal things that happened. This is the only song that, <laughs> that didn't have, I didn't kill anybody. Okay, let's put it that way. Very, very good. Uh, a lot of disclaimers in this interview. I'm glad uh, and, and clearing, clearing up a lot of things. I didn't plan for it to be this way, man. I promise. I didn't realize it was going to be there. <laughs> no, it's all, all good. But yeah, no, I, that was the one that kind of stuck out to me. I was like, oh, it's got a different. It, it has a very different vibe, like because the rest are kind of it's kind of similar vibes, you know, kind of yeah. similar you know tones and all that stuff. And then I listen to that one, I'm like, huh, that's a bit different. Yeah, and it's like well, we're just gonna throw this one over the fence, like far left, and you're like, oh god, okay. It's, it's a heavy song, and it's like oh, it's yeah. fun to play, and I do like the little scream trap, scream shit, like in the middle of it. But it's not shit. I know it takes like very hard for people to do a lot of people to do that but um and i don't do it well so that's also like my least favorite part of that song but yeah it's definitely different <laughs> let's just put it that way so well, the last thing uh, we'll be moving to gotcha. no for sure so um so what did the haunted house think like when you when you sent them the song oh, even fucking funnier that you you asked that they no longer exist anymore. They've moved their places and they've changed their name completely. They liked the song, but they ended up like changing their name from Corpsewood Hollow and moved to cities in Alabama. And I was like, what the fuck? Okay. Yeah. You still use the song, please. For the love of God, somebody use the song. <laughs> Any haunted houses out there across right. America yeah, or, just, or the world internationally? <laughs> please. Anybody. Anybody listening? Uh, well, that was a twist. <laughs> That was yeah. a twist for that song. 
It was like a big slap to the face because we held on to it for a year. That, that was actually our fault, too. Because, again, we went through so many changes. And we we're like, dude, we can't release this right now. It's like fucking Christmas. And we're like, hey, you're right. So we waited till like September, the end of September of last year to like push it as a single before we start working with pavement, which someone ended up biting us in the ass, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> no, I got you. I got you. Now, and I did want to talk about, so uh, I really like the, the album title of Hurt Turns Into Hate. How did that come about? How did you choose the uh, title for the album? Um, well, it's, um, it was, a, it's the song too, that kind of started it. I think, uh, once we got the EP, like we realized like, okay, we have these seven songs and, uh, they were like, okay, what's kind of about, it? it's like when heart turns into hate. So, and the song, uh, was written about, uh, you know, everybody goes through a uh, possible breakup. I guess hopefully nobody goes through like shitty ones that I've gone through, um, but uh, a buddy of mine was going through it, and I remember he got a uh, phone call during the day, and I happened to be with him, and he had been really down and out about this because they were engaged, and um, but they were breaking up, and uh, so <laughs> she was like, "Hey, I told you to come get your shit, and uh, I'm just gonna throw it away now." So I watched his face go from, yeah, yeah. Sorry, there's more to that, but this is not the time or place for that. But I watched him go from being in pain to being really fucking mad. And I was like, I remember that feeling. And I remember telling him, I was like, dude, uh, like, it's when the hurt turns into hate. Then he was like, yeah. And then he kind of walked off and it like clicked in my head. And I was like, wait, I've got to write this down. I've got to get some shit going. And so when we looked back over the, like the whole overview of the songs that had been written, even over the past three years. So this has like been our love child for like, three years of trying to push something out as a whole. And we were like, you know what? Yeah. It it kind of it kind of fits fits really well. And so I like it. I'm glad you like it too. Yeah. But that's where it came from. <laughs> it's just more heartbreak bullshit in yeah that I, I remember feeling and I can actually write lyrics about it. So I oh, gotcha. I'm, you know, sorry to hear about your friend and, and your past experience I as well, but I I, I I can relate to that as well. You know, it, it it's unfortunate. It's a it's a sad you know it's a sad part of life. I mean, it, you you just know it. You know, it's a good it's lesson to happen learn. at some point. You're better for it at the end of the day because nobody's gonna hurt you like that if they really love you, man. People throw that word around like it's fucking a piece of cheese or some shit, and it's not, man. You need to mean that. And a lot of people won't love you back the same way you love them. It's just how life goes, sadly. But you live and you learn, man. Live and you learn. Amen, that might be the name of our next album. Live and learn. <laughs> I'm setting myself up for failure is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> well, we'll love to see what happens with you guys, but, um, but <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, the next album is going to be really positive. <laughs> Yeah, just have that, you know, that have that dynamic. So, like, you have to listen to this album, then you have to listen to this one. You know, the dark and then the light. Yeah, hey, there we go. We're setting it up already. We we'll have to talk yeah. after we get that recorded. We'll figure this out. You know. Yeah, I'll take I'll take one percent. You have one percent, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, go on the way up. Keep, keep that in mind. Yeah. All right. On to some uh, some more so positive new, you know, news now for you guys. Starting on May twentieth, you guys are touring with Texas Hippie Coalition. Have you performed with Texas Hippie Coalition before? We have not, but I'm really excited. Uh, so, um, sorry, th this makes me laugh still. So, the reason why one of the members left after um, the, the last tour that we went on, that one of the newest members, the reason why he decided to part ways, he said he didn't enjoy the lifestyle that we partied too much. And he was like, are we, you guys going to party that hard on this, like – with Texas Hippie Coalition, I was like, dude, they're a fucking party band. Their initials are THC. They go by it, like, pretty hardcore. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, we like to drink. We like to have a good time, and those dudes love to have a good time, and I, I'm I'm really excited to actually play these shows and hang out with them, and we get to go to cool We get to start our tour off in Texas with Texas Hippie Coalition, so I'm... <laughs> how many people can say that? Which I'm sure there's a few, but not that many. And I'm really pumped about it. And then we're going to New Orleans after that. Shit. It's going to be crazy as hell. It's going to be a good time. 
But it definitely sounds like, I mean, I don't know how many people, I don't know how many bands can say they, you know, perform a Texas Hippie Coalition in Texas, but you guys can add your name to the list. Yes. So. God forbid, I, as long as everything goes well, I'm knocking on wood. I'm so pumped about getting this shit kicked off. Sorry. And I also do that because we've had a lot of bad luck with things. Uh, see, we were supposed to do, um, we we're supposed to do a run with Josie Scott and Seven Year Witch. Uh, this whenever Josie got COVID, and then like we couldn't do that. Um, we we're supposed to do a run with The Lucid, which is David Ellison's band. We we're supposed to do that too, and then their uh, guitar player, uh, his name happens to be Drew, got testicular cancer. So like, it, <laughs> yeah, we had a show lined up with Scott Stapp too, and then like something fell to the wayside on that. When I was like, oh my god, like it just back to back to back to back. I'm like, all right. So I, I've got to be in Texas on stage sweating. Opening up for Texas Hippie Coalition, and then watch them play before like I accept that we're actually doing this. So <laughs> I'm, I'm I, a little, um, little sitting there. Well, I, I I wish you the best. You know, positive vibes that everything goes very well. I know. Um, I I heard I heard about those tours canceled. Like, I was actually supposed to see Scott Stamp like last year, and then like the whole, you know the whole tour got canceled. So yeah, I know what you mean. I was. Everybody gives him so much shit just because his past man. He, he's a new guy, by the way. Like I, I saw him right before the pandemic here in Chattanooga. Uh, he was on tour with like Theory of a Dead Man. Fucking phenomenal. Him playing Creed songs again makes me so happy. I've I've always loved Creed. Uh, you know, I'm a huge Alter Bridge fan too. So I'm and they're in they've been talking about doing another Creed album, which would be kind of fucking cool. I, I mean, I'm here for it. Don't get me wrong, I love Alter Bridge, but I mean, you know, Miles has got his stuff with Slash and well, Mark's got his stuff, his solo stuff, and he's got Frank Sinatra stuff too. I'm sorry, I'm fangirling right now because I'm a huge fan. But uh, it'd be cool to get another Creed album, at least one more. If they can, everybody can get together and everybody be cool about it. It'd be awesome. Yeah, I um, I enjoyed their their last one, which was like their reunion album, the Full Circle one. Full I circle. thought it was some of their best work. Dude, agreed. Like, oh my god, Bread of Shame. Like you. <laughs> You like I put it on for like a bunch of metalheads that like which I'm also a metalhead but again love Creed. I've put it on for them. They're like, dude, they're not heavy at all. And I was like, dude, listen to this fucking riff. Like you're gonna sit there and tell me they're like, who is this? I was like, it's fucking Creed, man. It's Creed. Oh, yeah, I mean, the track is amazing too. That twelve string beginning on full circle, fucking go, man. Oh, yeah, right. and like overcome. I I, I saw Scott Stapp. Yeah. Uh, back in 2019, and he was just on. It was just an hour and a half of him. It was no openers. It was just Scott Stapp, yeah. and it was it was amazing. Like amazing. Like I wasn't super familiar with Creed at that time. Like I I, I knew who Creed, Creed was, but like I wasn't like. Oh, I, you know, I get listening. it. Man. There's, there's a six year difference between us, man. I get it. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> but, anyway, but but like I was like really enjoying the show. Like he put on a phenomenal. You know his vocals sounded great. His band sounded great. I was like, and and he played like even some of his new stuff. Like his last his album. Go yeah. man, so good. Like they're playing that shit on the radio, and I was like, "That's Scott Stapp." I was like, uh, "Okay." And I and like I looked up the whole album. I was like, "All of this is really good." I was like, "I'm I'm glad he's gotten past a lot of his old demons and has started writing." I I saw him with this old band, Art of Anarchy, in Atlanta. Uh, our buddies in Emerge were opening up for him. Shout out to Emerge as well, by the way, and to this day, and the other guys that I've mentioned. Sorry, I'm kind of behind on that, but. uh we went down there and like watched it. And I was like, dude, Scott's putting on a hell of a show. But I remember at the time there's a guy in the back. He pissed off Scott. I remember hearing this. He was like, play my own goddamn prison. And I don't think Scott liked that at the point in time. Cause it was like really quiet. And he's just like, uh, no, we're not doing that. Which was uh, like, I understood it at the time, but it, at that point he was not covering any Creed songs. He was doing strictly art of anarchy stuff, which that stuff was really good too, man. Uh, they don't give like enough credit. I think there was a falling out between all of them. They had like Disturbs bass player in, in the band too. They were they were really good. Like, look it up, man. Look well, it check up. it out. Yeah, they weren't bad at all, man. <laughs> well, it, it was just so cool how um, you know because he, he had a very low time you know um, for his life, but now to see him now, you know, that he's doing cool. doing really well. He's super healthy and uh, he's still performing at this high caliber. And um, as it, you know, it's funny. I um, I played his new album for my mom. Like we were in the car and we're, I had the CD on me. So and like now my mom's a fan of Scott Stapp. It's funny. Oh, see, uh, uh, shit. My dad was all always a big fan of Creed, but I kind of jaded him 
when I was in like middle school of like, dude, you need to listen to this. And he was like, I don't, I don't like this shit. So it took me <laughs> a long time because I got into Alter Bridge so much. And he didn't want to listen to what I wanted. To, I was like, dude, you need to listen to this. I, like, I want to listen to this shit. And I was like, dude, this is Creed without Scott Stapp. And he ended up loving all of it. And then I was like, dude, Scott Stapp's got a new album. And he's like, oh, hell yeah, I need to listen to that. And uh, I remember putting it on for him. And like, he listens to it a lot. And he was like, dude, hell yeah. And then so whenever we were playing for the, he's also our manager, by the way, is my my dad. And uh, shout out to him. Um, <laughs> He was like super ecstatic about us opening for Scott Stapp. So when that got kind of shut down, it sucked. But I am like so happy that he's figured everything out. He's in a good place. Like you said, man, he looks good. He's healthy and still performs so fucking well, man. And I'm just happy they're playing some Creed songs again, too. I, I will be selfish in that sense. <laughs> No, for sure. Uh, didn't mean to go on. We went on a whole uh, Scott oh, yeah, we did. We went on a whole <laughs> but, no, but no, for sure. And I, I do, I'll be wrapping up this interview soon. So I do want to focus back on Seven Stones now. Um, so for any, you know, so, you know, wishing the positive vibes of this tour does happen. What can people expect from a Seven Stone show opening for Texas Hippie Coalition? Oh, my God. A lot of energy, a lot of fun. And, uh, it's going to be fun, like a party. Like, it's going to be a good time. So if you guys are coming out, like, um, definitely, like, we like to drink beer. And we're going to hang out after the shows, like, well, before Texas Hippie gets on stage, we're going to get off stage, load our stuff off, and we'll be hanging out with people. Like, come talk to us. Smack Isaiah in the back of the head. I would enjoy that thoroughly. Um, <laughs> we're just there. We're there to have fun. We're there to get everybody pumped up. And uh, I think we're the band to do it. I'm I think we got this, and uh, I just, I'm just excited to meet the guys and play some shows, man. I'm, it's time, it's time. Oh, right on, right on. Sounds like it's gonna be a really great time. If anyone can, please come out to any. If they're in, if Seven Stones and Texas Hippie Coalition coming to the show near you, definitely come out, talk to them. Um, preferably no violence on them, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, no uh, violence okay. per se. Toward <laughs> Isaiah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Drew, so obviously you got the tour coming out, you got the new album out right now. Um, so what is like the rest of 2023 looking like for Seven Stones? It's um a little up in the air right now. Like uh, you know, we we all work day jobs still as as of now. We you know still trying to you know chase these dreams and you know we're getting close. So um after Texas Hippie, we'll see how the rest of the release is going and uh you know what pavement thinks and see if we can get some more stuff booked we actually are playing with buck cherry uh may 2nd we just we just grabbed that one we're playing here in chattanooga tennessee so uh we're, we're pumped about that so if we start picking up more shows and stuff uh that's the plan we have a few private parties that we have but uh hopefully got more stuff for the rest of 2023 that's the plan that's the plan <laughs> Well, right on. I hope everything goes very well for you guys for 2023. And uh, real quick, where are the best places to find and support Seven Stones? All over the place, man. Uh, all platforms, Spotify, Apple Music. Um, you know, we have Facebook. I think it's Seven Stones. Yeah, Seven Stones Official, I think it's our Instagram. And we have a website, sevenstonesofficial.com as well. All right, very good. I will drop some links for Seven Stones in the description of this podcast. Drew, thank you so much for stopping by Super Cool Radio. Had a really great time chatting with you. Thank you, Matthew. Super Cool Radio, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for listening. Of course, thank you so much. For Drew Elliott of Seven Stones, I'm your host as always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching and listening to Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty.